Hey, Tim Thompson. Happy Monday. I am coming to you live from my comfy couch. Um, today, we are going to have our first lunch bunch. I'm super excited about that. And we also had a birthday yesterday. Yesterday was Ellie's birthday. Happy birthday, Ellie. Here's a special message for you. It's your birthday week. I'm sure this is not how you were expecting to be spending your birthday, but we wanted to let you know we're still thinking of you. All right, I want to give a birthday shout out to the third grade. In Thompson class, we have Eleanor. Hey, happy birthday, Eleanor. And also in Mari's class, we have Archer. Archer, enjoy your day. We're thinking about you guys. I just want to give a shout out to Malik and Schweitz class. Happy birthday. Also want to say to Mayella and Brooklyn, also both in Weber's class. Happy birthday, guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. And happy birthday to Elliot and Miss Knutson's class and Miss Lauren and Miss Osberg's class. We hope you guys have a great birthday week. Enjoy, guys. We miss you. That was so great. Those were our counselors giving birthday shout outs to some birthday kiddos from around the school. And Ellie, we hope you had the absolute best day. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I will pull out our next Lunch Bunch crew. Ooh. Our next Lunch Bunch is on Wednesday. I'm gonna do it on Wednesday. So Mondays and Wednesdays, I will have a Lunch Bunch um, going on till the end of the year. So I love that and I love meeting with you guys. So I'm excited for today's Lunch Bunch. Um, I just had Google Meets with two friends this morning and one friend just needed help making sure why two of her assignments said they weren't completed. We figured that out. Then my other friend needed a, um, help putting a plan together so he could get caught up on some of his work um, and we figured out how to submit assignments. So here's the thing guys, if you have to open a Word document and type in your answers, when you exit out of that, you have to go back and click submit. If there's a little blue line that says not submitted, it means that Ms. Thompson knows you've saved it as a draft, but I don't get your finished copy. So if you're done with an assignment, you must click submit. I have been loving the Google Meets because I can hear about any issue you are having. Um, please let me know if you want a Google Meet. Um, there's a Google form. I will send it out again tomorrow to your families. Also, what was I about to say? There was something else. Mm, I forget, so if it comes to me, then I will say it again later after I read The Wild Robot. Oh my gosh, the last chapter was huge. We found out that there was, and pause it right here if you have not read chapter 62 with us. Chapter 62 and 63. We found out that Bright Bill saw a factory of Roz's being built and that the world as we know it is very different. Do you guys think it's the future? Sounds like it could possibly be the future. The way the earth is turning out with the water levels rising, a lot of us relying on robots to get what we need. All right, chapter 64, the special robot. After Brightbill told the story of his winter, he and his mother sat in silence and thought. They thought about poor Longneck and the human who had killed him. They thought about farms and cities and factories. They thought about Roz and where she truly belonged. Then, after a while, Roz told Brightbill her own winter story. She spoke of her long, dark hibernation and of how she had awoken to find the nest caved in around her. She spoke of blizzards and frozen animals. She spoke of the many lodges she had built and one that caught fire, but she mostly spoke of all the new friendships she had forged. I used to think that you were the only animal who would ever care about me, she said to her son. I worried that without you around, I'd be alone again. But I was not alone. In fact, I made new friends, all on my own. I think the other animals might actually like me. Of course they like you, Ma, squawked the goose. You're the most likable robot I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot. It was true. Brightbill had seen hundreds of different robots that winter, and none of them were anything like Roz. None of them had learned to speak with animals, or had saved an island from the cold, or had adopted a gosling. As he sat there watching the robot's animal gestures and listening to her animal sounds, 
Bright Bill realized just how special his mother really was. Chapter 65, The Invitation Rosda was the first to arrive at the next dawn truce. She had an important announcement to make. The robot patiently waited in the great meadow as the sky slowly brightened and the animals slowly gathered. And once everyone was milling around and chatting, Roz began speaking in her perkiest voice. Pardon the interruption. If I could please have a moment of your time. The crowd settled down and listened to their robot friend. We made it through a terrible winter. A new generation of youngsters is arriving, and my son Brightbill has just returned to the island with his flock. I think we can all agree that there is much to celebrate. So in addition to the dawn truce this morning, I'd like us to have another truce this, e truce this evening. We can call it the evening truce, or better yet, the party truce. The crowd began chattering with excitement. I have planned a celebration, Roz continued, and you are all invited. I will take care of everything. Just please meet back here at dusk. Oh, and I have a little surprise. Actually, it's not little. It's quite large. The point is, I have planned a celebration, and I hope to see you all there. Sounds great, Roz, but I'm afraid there's one problem with your plan. Mr. B Beaver blinked his beady eyes. The moon won't be out this evening, so it'll be too dark for some of us to see. You are half correct, said Roz. Tonight will be moonless, but it will not be dark, I promise. Now, if you'll excuse, excuse me, I must prepare for our party. I'll see everyone back here at dusk. Goodbye. Chapter 66 the celebration. Dawn turned to day, day turned to dusk, and just as Roz had asked, animals were gathering again in the great meadow. Word had spread across the island that the robot was throwing a party and everyone wanted to see what the fuss was about. The fuss seemed to be about a giant stack of wood. Roz had spent the day collecting logs and branches and stacking them in a perfect massive tower. The animals crowded around it, trying to imagine its purpose, and then they saw a golden light flickering in the distance. Roz emerged from the dark forest, and in her hand was a flaming stick, which she held up like a torch. She was camouflaged in thick mud and clusters of wildflowers, but her camouflage wasn't for hiding. It was her party dress. The animals watched as the robot glided across the meadow, surrounded by a warm glow. Thank you all for being here, she said as she joined the crowd. One year ago, I awoke on the shore of this island, and I was just a machine. I functioned. But you, my friends, and my family, you taught me how to live, and so I thank you. No, thank you, Roz, shouted a voice. You have also taught me to be wild, said the robot. So let us all celebrate life and wildness together. At those words, Roz heaved her torch high into the air. It soared up, up, and up, and landed on the very top of the wooden tower. A ball of fire burst toward the night sky, and suddenly the meadow was bathed in firelight. Hundreds of shining eyes watched as bright flames crept down the sides of the tower and embers floated away on the breeze. The animals stepped toward the bonfire, eager to feel its warmth, and then stepped back, afraid of feeling too much, and soon everyone was moving. The deer started leaping, the foxes started trotting, the snakes slithered and the insects buzzed, and the fish jumped up from the river. Brightbill led all the birds into the air, where they wheeled around the bonfire like a tornado of feathers. Roz sprang into a wild dance. Look at them all dancing around the bottom. Roz sprang into a wild dance, her shaggy dress shaking and swooshing with each movement. It was a wild party and it took our robot and it took our robot to make it happen. Roz and the animals partied all night long. They were so busy singing and laughing and dancing that they didn't see the cargo ship as it sliced past the island. But the ship saw them. It saw the towering bonfire, it saw the robot, and then it, con it quickly continued through the darkness. Chapter 67. I'm actually going to stop there, but I want to know what the importance is of this ship seeing Roz and this fire. Maybe they'll go back to the mainland and say that one of their robots is on this island. I don't know. So I could not remember what I was thinking of earlier when I paused and was like, mm, what was I about to say? I cannot remember. But anyways, the big thing I wanted to tell you on this, um, this check-in, sorry, distracted by things going on outside, um, on this check-in was that you need to click submit on your assignments. Um, 
if you're in our lunch bunch today, you'll get a link via It's Learning, but it's not going to be on the announcements or the events page. It's going to be in your private messages, so you'll get it in your chat. Um, all right, I'm going to pick out our next four lunch bunchers. I had five this time, but I'm going to do four this time. Okay? All right. I've got... Neary. Neary's on Wednesday's lunch bunch. I pick out another one. Will be. Will be. You're on our lunch bunch Wednesday. Sorry, I'm going to unstick some of these. They're all sticking together. Okay, next one. Addy. All right, so we have Addy and Neary and next one. Oh my goodness, they're all sticking. Maya. So we've got Maya Ogenard will be Addy and Neary. All righty. That's going to be an exciting lunch bunch. I will see you guys then.